The next what? All right. Um, so if you guys have no questions from homework stuff. Yes. So I did my math lab, so I have, I have it here. Yeah, sure. Uh, 8R minus S plus T equals negative 1, 4. Negative? 14. 14. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next one's 4R plus 2S minus 3T equals negative 17. R minus 3S plus 2T equals negative 1. So, where do you run into trouble on this one? We yeah, talked about yeah. these a decent amount, right? Do we know how to kind of tackle these? So, did, where, where yes, did you... I just would like to see if I tackle it incorrectly. I mean, I got the wrong answer. So, I must have tackled it incorrectly. These things, and, and, uh, and this is why you want to be really clear about what you're doing, because when I grade these, I give as much partial credit as I can. Because all you need is one little mistake which humans, is the definition of being human, is you're going to make a mistake somewhere. All you need is one forgotten negative sign. All you need is one time that you added two and four and you got eight. And the whole thing goes to shit, right? So I try to kind of keep track. And the better you are at showing me what you did, the easier it is for me to get partial credit, right? Um, so I made it two first to knock out the R. So to do it more specifically, you did... One and two. One and two? Oh, you did... Negative two. All right. So you take one, you left it alone, and you took two and multiplied by negative two yeah. to kill the R's, mm -hmm. right? So if you multiply this by negative two, you'll get negative eight R minus four S plus six T equals 34. So is everything good so far? All right, so that's an easy place to make a negative sign mistake, right? As they say that, I'm making sure I didn't. All right, good. And then you add these together. Yes, yeah, so I got minus 5s plus okay. 6, or 17. My 5s and my s's are the same thing. All right. Plus 17 equals 20. 20. Okay, so that's our fourth equation. 1 plus 2 is 4. I like it. And then <laughs> what'd you do next? 2 and 3. Good. So between 2 and 3, you can kill r again. Minus four. Yeah, so you want to multiply this guy. So let me take that's old news. Let me take him away so it doesn't freak me out. So if I leave two alone, and I take three and I multiply by negative four, like you said, so that they're opposite sides, right? So negative four. So I'm going to multiply each piece by negative four. So I get negative four R plus 12 S. Minus 18 equals 4. All right. And the whole reason we did that was so the R's die, and they do. That's good. Uh, and then I get 14S minus 11T equals 13. Minus 13. Negative 13, yeah, good. So that's our fifth equation. So now between these two, I can try to do something. All right? So what, what can I do between those two? The nice thing is both the S and the T are, are already opposite signs, right? That's nice because they don't have to deal with any negatives. Because negatives are another evil thing besides zero. They screw us up whenever they can. Um, personally, I would go for this because it's easier to see what has to happen here. Or it's easier to work with. Smaller, kind of smaller numbers there in general, 14 and 11. So I, I give this guy... Seven and give this guy 11. so that they'll both be the same at the end and they'll die, right? They'll cancel. How are we doing? So you guys have a pain expression. Right. You're like, that's my normal phase of math class, dude. All right. All right. So if I take the fifth one, multiply it by seven. Seven times 14. 98. Good. 98S minus 77. T equals 91. positive 91. Kick ass. And I multiply this, no, I'm not by negative 7, Jeff, by 7, right? So that'll be negative 91. Yeah. Is that a place? Is that good? Uh, and then the fourth one, I want to multiply by 11 so the diesel cancel. 
Negative. 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 This is what I mean by make it clear what's going on. You can make a very simple mistake but lose a lot of points because I couldn't tell what was going on. Um, so it's 98S minus 43S. Good. These are gone. 429. Yeah. That goes in three times. Yeah, it looks good. So S is 3. So you got this answer so far and it was wrong? Um, no, this is right, sir. I must have messed up somewhere in there. Okay, all right. Because uh, it was ugly. It's really simple. I just wanted to see if there's a shortcut or something that you might know that I didn't know or something of that sort. There sort of is, and it's something we don't talk about in this It's not part of the curriculum of this class, but some of you guys might know matrices. Um. And people don't like them because you, you have to first learn how to use them. But once you learn how to use them, they are such a shortcut to this. Because you don't have to carry these freaking variables around. Uh, anyway, but it's not part of what we talk about. It's a little bit beyond our curriculum. Yeah. But so for us, no, there's nothing to help. Sorry. You have to just power through it. All right. And to me, when I'm grading this, I want to see evidence that you understand how to do it. If you get here and you start getting weird shit, and time's running out and you got other problems to do, go do the other problems. Make sure you've shown me that you know the process to solve this, right? That's what's most important. Okay. Anything else from homework? So, yeah, if you're doing my math lab, you can totally write, copy it down, bring it in. I've had people put it up here on the desk, right, if they have math, my math lab problems. All right. Okay. So, we're going to get back into... Uh, 12, 4, believe it or not, that's where we left off, if I remember correctly. Well, we sort of did 12, 5, but there's a little bit of 12, 4 we haven't done yet. So just to kind of further get us back in the groove. Um, well, what could you do with, with this? Yeah, why 25 times 2? Isn't that 5 times 10? 25 makes more sense. Good. All right. I like some of you guys like yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, I definitely want to break it up in a certain way. I want to break it up so a part of it is doable, right? 25 is a square number, so I should be able to take square root. Square root 25 is 5. Uh, square root of 2 is, I don't know. So if you type in your calculator square root of 50, you get the same decimal as you type in 5 times square root of 2. It's the same number. It's sort of like saying 4 divided by 8 gives you the same number as 1 divided by 2. Of course it does. We know that. But it's the exact same idea. That's why I sometimes call this reducing the radical, because it's a lot like reducing a fraction. The book just calls it simplifying radical. All right. All right. How are we doing so far? I mean, that's that. Coming back. What about uh, if I had... What you got you? I don't know. Three to the fourth. Three to the fourth. Huge. So say this correctly. What what root is this? Cube root. Cube. Good. And like Arby's saying, you're saying that. What can I do? I can totally do that because these are the same. Right. So cube root of two times cube root of twenty is cube root of forty. Because these are the same root, I'm allowed to do that. We've done it all the time. What's eight times seven? 56. 56. Why could you do that? Because they both have the same root. No root. Right? So, I mean, we've been doing it already, all the time. The only reason I can multiply them is because they have the same root. 
a weird way to say it, but all, these have the same root, so I can totally multiply them like always, but now what can I do with 40 related to the cube root? Yeah, <clears throat> 8 is a cube, so it's really a good idea, if you haven't done this yet, or if you don't already know this, to make like a list of cubes, 3 cubed, what's 3 cubed? 27, what's 4 cubed? 64. 64. What's 5 cubed? 125. 125 cubed. Mm -hmm. What's 6 cubed? 196. 216 shit. That's right. <laughs> 216 shit. That's right. And, or, and make a list. Of, you should know squares better. You should know squares all the way to at least 12, if not beyond, right? And maybe even some fourth powers. But anyway, you should be able to very quickly break these down. If you don't know these two, well, you just start dividing by two, three, until you get a number that you can break into three parts, right? So this I can break up as the cube root of eight, because it's going to be cube rootable, times the cube root of five. <coughs> and the cube root of eight is, because it takes three twos to make eight, so the cube root of eight is two, and the cube root of five is, I don't know, How's this coming? Is this coming back? Yeah. Yes. Working through all that layer of stuff that's built up over a week. Okay. All right, so just to catch back up to where we really are, we're really here. Just like this one, What's the first thing I could do? Divide. Because they're both this fourth root, I could just divide 5 and 8. Now you could start breaking 80 up and doing it that way, but that's actually harder than just dividing 80 by 5, right? 80 divided by 5. Good. And what's the fourth root of 16? Good, because it takes four twos to multiply to be 16. Right? I always get somebody tell me the answer is 4 there. Right. They're seeing that as a square root, or they're thinking 4 goes into 16 four times. That's not what that means, right? It takes four twos to multiply to be 16. Cool. I like it. Okay. So what about, here's some new stuff. You ready? In the event that I can't simplify like I did here, but I have a radical on the bottom. So, for example, if I had 2 over the cube root of 7. There's a lot of reasons we do this, but probably the most important initial reason we do this is radicals are bad enough. They're even worse if they're on the bottom. Right? So sometimes it's hard to explain why we do this, but there's a lot of reasons for knowing how to do this. It's called rationalization. It's not the psycho psychological rationalization. You rationalize why you do something. No, it's not that. Uh, this is an irrational number right now, right? Irrational meaning you can't write it as a decimal and stops and we can't write it as a fraction. You guys with me so far? So rationalization says I want to make the bottom rational. And if only in real life it was this easy. Why can't I not do the cube root of seven? Somebody help me out with that. Give me some answers. Okay, you can't even break seven up. So why would you want to break seven up? What would be your intention for doing that? <coughs> True, but, but in the context of the cube root, what would, what would you be trying to break this up into? So why can I do the cube root of 27? Because I can break 27 up into three times three, 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 times, three, three times three, a group of three numbers of the same thing, right? So how many, how many sevens do I currently have in there? How many should be in there if I want to be able to do this root? There should be three sevens in there. Are you with me? Because what's the cube root of 7 cubed? It's almost too easy of a question. 7. What does it take 3 sevens to multiply by 7 cubed? Well, it's telling me it takes 3 sevens. All right. So there you go. Right? So, so now watch. This is kind of cool. This is where people think I'm cheating. But I can take any fraction I want to and multiply top and bottom by any damn thing I want to except 0. Right? I can't multiply by 0. I get a freaky ass 0 over 0 thing. And that's no good. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give this dude what he's missing. 
I love looking at it. We've already seen problems like that. Remember with the, when we had rational expressions and one guy had an X plus five and the other guy had an X minus five. We gave them each what they were missing according to the other dude, right? So I know he's missing, what is he missing exactly? Two, Two sevens. So I'm gonna multiply top and bottom. I got, it's gotta be the same root, of course, or else I can't get the sevens in there. I'm gonna multiply by what he's missing. I'm gonna multiply by 49, seven squared. Why did I do that? And, and I call this, I don't call this rationalization, I call this completing the root. It's a cube root, so what's, what, how, what would make it complete? Three things. It's got one thing, it needs two more. So officially this is called rationalizing the denominator. So on the top, I get 2 times cube root of 49. Can you make that the cube root of 98? You multiply 2 and 49. Why can't you multiply 2 and 49? Different roots. Yeah, 2 doesn't have a root. So you yeah. can't do it. They have to have the same root. So on the top, I just get 2 times the cube root of 49. Because I can't put those together. They all have the same root. What do I get on the bottom? 7. I get 7. I get the cube root of 7 cubed. Which is 7. So is the bottom rational now? Is the bottom still in a radical? No, it's not. No, it's not. So it's rational. So I have rationalized the denominator. That would be the final answer? That would be the final answer. Because nothing cancels. Nothing reduces. This what if the top was like 14 times? Uh, cube root of 7 squared. So instead of a 2, if it was a 14, you could it... Yeah, if it was a 14 here, then you could cancel. Okay. So the last thing you want to do is see if you can reduce it. But it, I, I was going to say it doesn't have a cube. But... Oh, yeah, but it'll be, yeah, at the end it could go with this guy. Okay. Yeah. So you never times the 2 and the 7 squared on the top. You never mess yeah, it. can't do that because this guy didn't have a cube root. Okay. Cool. Wait, so how did you do the bottom again? Uh, a cube root needs how many things in it so it can be done? Three. Does everyone understand what I mean when I say that? Right, I can do the cube root of eight because eight's got three twos, but I can't do the cube root of nine because right. nine only has two threes, right? Right, right, right. Cool, so let's do one like that. Uh, if I had cube root of 11 over the cube root of nine. I still, I still actually don't get the process. Yeah. Here we go, let's do another one. So again, I've got cube roots here, right? Specifically on the bottom, I've got a cube root. So how many things does it need inside of it? Three. Three. Cool. Now, you guys are like, you've already said that so many times. So. I could give it two more nines, but why is that kind of silly? Because nine is already... What's nine made of? No, no, no. It's three times three, right? Yeah. Three times three. So what does it already have in it? Two threes. How many is it supposed to have so that you can do the cube root? Three. So how many more threes does it need? Four more. Do you see how simple that, just thinking about it is? Whatever the root is, is how many of everything has to be in here for it to be done. If you don't have that many things, you, you, you give it what it's missing. It's almost too simple to believe. You're like, yes, that man, that's hard. So he's like, yeah, dude, this is hard. Yes? it has too much. Cool, we'll, we'll look at one of those. We can, we can simplify it like we did with a square root of 50. We can pull the too much stuff out, right? Um, so here, what am I gonna multiply top and bottom by? Three. Three, like that? Yeah, cube root of three. Cube root of three. <laughs> You're like, smart ass, you know what I mean. But just make sure that everyone understands that's gotta be under a cube root or else it can't go inside the other dude, right? So on the top, I get what? Beautiful. I can multiply those because not like this one. It already it actually has the same root. What do I get on the bottom? I'm going to get three, but just to show you that that's true. Nine times three is, and the cube root of twenty-seven is. I didn't really force it to have all those threes. It just kind of happened. So I can't take credit for everything being a freaking three, but that's the answer. 
So it doesn't only work for Q roots, of course. It works for all roots. Just whatever the root currently is, you give it what it's missing. So the question over here was, uh, what if I had like um, square root of 5 over square root of, uh, yes, sure, square root of 27. Right? So your question was, what if the root has too many things? So what is, what's this bottom have in it already? Not the 27, it's got what? Three, three. three threes. And it's always supposed to have how many things? Two. So one thing you can do is, we know how to handle It's just like we did the square root of 50 earlier. How do I simplify square root of 27? Yeah, I can break 27 up as 9 times 3. So then you'll have the square root of 5 over 3, three square root of 3, right? Make sure that that's a 3, not a cube root, right? Stop there for a second. Actually, you guys are like this. <laughs> well, the, I can't tell how you feel. You know, like, that's exactly right. <laughs> Shit, that's that's scary. You won't know how I feel until it's too late. Now, what's the only part of the bottom that's a problem? You understand what I'm saying? You know, there's only one part of the bottom that's not rational, that's still a radical. What's that? Square root of three, right? This dude is completely fine. He's, he's a three. He's fine. So looking at the square root of three, why? What's it missing? What's the square root need inside of it? Yeah, it needs, it needs one more three. Right now it's only got one three. How many things does the square root need inside of it? Two. two. That's why it's called a square root. It needs two things, right? Mm -hmm. So what am I going to multiply top and bottom by? What's it missing? Three. It's missing a three, so I've got to multiply by square root of three. So they can actually go in there, right? No reaction for me. I want to make sure you understand. <laughs> this is so much simpler than students make it to be. Whatever the root is, if it was a fifth root, how much do I need inside? If it's a fifth root, how many things do I need inside? Five, in order for it to be done, right? So if I see four sevens inside of a fifth root, I need one more seven. So I'm going to multiply by the fifth root of seven to give it that one more seven. That's all this is. That's why I call this completing the root. Square root, so only got one three, I'm going to complete it. I'm going to give it the other half, give it the other three. Aw, it's complete. Right, so what do I get on the top? 15. Square root of 15. And I, on the bottom, I get 3. The three's sitting there, right? 3 times, and what's root 3 times root 3? Three? Three. Root 9, which is 3. three. three. <laughs> I think of this another way. Just like I said, what is the square root of 3? It's 3 to the 1 half. It's half of a 3. So if I multiply it by another half of 3, I make a whole 3. So that wasn't completely me joking around. That's actually what's happening. It completes the 3. Does that make sense? A square root is a one-half power. So one-half of a three, one-half of a three makes a whole freaking three. So this is root 15 over nine. So that's how you handle it if there's too much in there already. Right, where'd it go? Here, that's where I started. <laughs> if there's too much in there already, you first simplify it. Pull out the part that's not a problem, and then you're going to identify the part that is a problem. Should make sense. That is one way to put it. Leave it like what? Sorry. Wouldn't be it wouldn't be good enough. In fact, you'd lose most of the points because the instructions would say rationalize the denominator, and the whole point of that is to make sure that the bottom no longer has a radical piece. So if you stop somewhere where it still has a radical, that's completely the idea is to get rid of that. Right? So that's a conceptual problem. I'm going to take more points off for that. So you, you know you're not done until the bottom is a nice whole number. Do you have any radicals down there? So that's the... Uh, that's nature. rationalizing the denominator. So here, let me give you one here real quick. You guys try this one. Uh, let's call this one. Oh, let's 
下一位。喂Sort of a you know it or you don't moment here. Is it missing three eighths? Is that the best way to look at that? No, it has three eighths. Two times two times two. It has three two two. two, 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 two so two, you always make sure. It's not missing an eighth. Exactly. So don't treat the number as it is. If you can break it down, you do this. You can see what it really already has. So it has three twos already. How many does it need total? One more two. One more yeah. So it needs one more to make four. So you're going to multiply top and bottom by? Not by two. Fourth power is two. Fourth root. Fourth root two. Two. Good. So on the top, you get the fourth root of ten. On the bottom, you get the fourth root of sixteen, which is two. And if you can skip that step and go straight from here to there, it's fine. Because you've developed the bottom to become two. So what's the bottom going to become? Two. You know it is. Or you can do the middle step there if you want to. So you can really see what the hell's going on. Okay. So that's just, I like that idea because it reinforces what roots need to have happen before they can be done. I love that phrase. Only I could see that echoed in others' faces. But we'll see. I'll let you guys try that homework out. All right. So that was one little piece out of section 12.4 that I didn't talk about. 12.4 is all about dividing fractions, I mean, dividing radicals, so it makes sense that we talk about this idea there. There's got to be a ratio of this. Cool? Okay. 12.5, uh, we actually got a little bit into this. I don't know if you guys remember, but 12.5 uh, had problems like this here. Um, cube root of... 5 minus 3 cube root of 5, for example, start off really nice. So what's your gut tell you? Is it negative, is it negative 2 and 5? I mean, cube root of 2 and 5? Is there any multiplication going on in this problem? No, never mind. Just here, right? This is subtraction, right? Yeah. So, so what's one of these minus three of these? Two. Well, negative two of those. Negative two of those. these. Yeah. Because look, what is cube root of five? What is it? Well, the correct answer is I don't know. I love it. You guys are like, I don't know what you want to say. That's exactly what you're doing. Uh, I don't know. Because I don't know what the hell cube root of 5 is. It's some number. Who knows? Shit. It's probably it's close to 2, right? Because cube root, not 2, but it's, it's a little bit below 2 because cube root of 8 is 2. You with me? Yeah. But I don't know what the hell it is exactly. So what do we do in algebra when I don't know what something is? Call it x. I could do that all day. Let x be what that is because I don't know what the hell it is. Minus 3 of the same damn things. Well, what's x minus 3x? 
Two. And what's x? x is always one. Keep it at five. No, come on. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm saying, but when you put it like that. Oh, I got you. Yeah, it's one. I got you. <laughs> so it's just like like terms. Right? It's the same idea. As long as these actually are alike. And what is like in this case? They have to have the same root and the same stuff on the inside. It's got to be exactly the same. And then I can consolidate them. So, what do I do if they're not exactly the same? What do I do if it's cube root of 5 minus uh, cube root of um, what, Jeff? I don't know. Shit. Let me want five. Are those like terms? Yeah. No. Yes. Of course they are. Because the same. Why were these like terms? Because, because I have a cube root of five minus so many cube roots of five. This is the same. Like terms. Oh. But didn't you say it was the same? If it has the same cubic root. If it has the same root and the same oh, inside. Oh, like, so like terms is like different terms. from. Okay, from so it's not having same. having the same root. Yeah, that's what I'm confused about too. Oh, okay. It's right. like it's more than that. It's a different. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, uh, yeah. as long I mean, yeah. the general idea is, what's x plus x? 2x. Two 2x. Two x. And why can I consolidate them? Because these are exactly the same. What's x plus x squared? That's it. That's it. Good. No x cubed. Don't give me that shit. <laughs> right? If it was x times x squared, that would be x cubed. But are these like terms? No. Hell no. Why? They're not exactly the same. They have the same letter. I don't give a shit. This one has too many. I can't consolidate those because they're different categories of things, right? But this is, there's a cube root of five, and there's three more cube root of five. I owe him three, so now I owe two to somebody. You know, I can put those together. I can consolidate them because they're re referencing the same exact type of thing. So I can't, do not tell me this is negative cube root of 130. You see where that came from? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, don't give me that. Can't you break it down? Good. You can, the nice thing is, I mean, with something like this, I can't do anything. But these aren't really variables. They're numbers. I can sometimes do something with numbers, right? And what can I do with the second dude? 27. I love it. And I can break this up as 27. And the really nice thing is very often there will be a hint in the problem. That's a 5, so try to break him down with 5. And what's nice about this number you can do it, right? What's the cube root of 27? Three. three. So then you get the same problem, right? One cube root of five minus three cube roots of five is negative two cube roots of five. Okay, all right. We'll continue that. The no reaction here. I like it. Here, yeah. No, the answer is negative two. Yeah, negative two. Cube root five. Yeah. So you got to be careful with the number that's in the root. Don't like it. Make it look like a coefficient, right? Totally different things. How are we doing? All right, you guys try this. One. Make sure everybody's reading that correctly. What are all the roots? What kind of roots are they? Square, square roots. I like it. Right? There's no, they're all square roots, right? So this is 2 square root of 12. That's 3 square root of 3. So try to do that. Just attack this directly, or you can use the one you can't do anything with. You can use it as a hint of what to try. So if you break seventy-five down.
by 3, it's 3 times 25. And the beautiful thing about 25 is I can do the square root of it, right? So I can break this up as square root of 25 times square root of 3 minus 2 times uh, square root of 4 times the square root of 3 plus 3 square root of 3. So I get 5 root 3 minus 2 times 2 root 3 my, uh, plus 3 root 3. Here I get 4. 4, good. 5 root 3 minus 4 root 3 plus 3 root 3. Yeah, 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. So you got 4 root 3s running around. Alright. I just can't be right, Jeff. That's too freaking easy. I don't know. I don't know if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, no, not quite. I don't know, so I, I think when some of you guys look at this row, let me say something here. Sometimes you get lost in where everything is and what goes with what. But remember, your minus and your pluses are always breaking things up into little bits, right? So I don't know if that sometimes seems to me to be part of the problem, is people get lost with what parts go with what parts. There's one, two, three parts here. Because the minus and the plus are separating them, of course, right? Because what organizational thing you can do for yourself when you're doing this kind of problem? All right. Maybe none of you had that problem, just in case. All right. So a couple more levels, and then I got a little handout for you guys to work on for a bit. Um, what do you think happens here? Remember that processes in math do not give the first shit about the numbers that are in there. So what property am I going to use here? Parentheses. Oh, um, first. Distributed. distributed. I like it. So I know what you meant. So the distributed property doesn't care that there's radicals in there, right? We do, because we have to deal with them. But it's still just distribute. But when you do distribute, what the hell happens? What's root 5 times 2 root 3? 2 root 15. Do you see why the 2 doesn't get affected? Anybody concerned about that? No. Because what, what, what's this? What happens here? 2 expressed. Yeah, anybody concerned that it's still a 2? Of course you're not, because the x's go together, right? They're the like base. They're going to go together and say, now i got two of these x's. Now i just got to pour a little 2 dudes. So that's exactly the little 2 dudes still there. The radicals can do stuff together all day long, right? Well, two dude is no dude. You stay with it. That is what is actually happening. And then of course, yeah, minus square root of thirty-five. And I know I'm done because that only has a five and a three, and that only has a five and a seven. There's not two of anything. I knew that going in because I saw all the parts of it going in. So don't even waste time trying to simplify it. And please, dear God, again. This is not somehow negative square root of 20. Right? Do you see where that would come from? I mean, I'm not even sure exactly what somebody, because I, I don't know. But those are not like terms. Can't go further. So guess what, what the next level would be? If I got distributed property, I've probably got... So if I had this, let's do let's mix it up a little bit. Ooh, that's yummy. I like that one. That's how a cube root is three sub x. Good, I like it. I always try to make if it's a cube root, I try to make sure it's sitting in that little chair there, right? So that's definitely on the outside. That would suck because it wouldn't play well with the square root. That'd be evil. So what happens here? So six. You get six. Square. Square root of x squared. I like it. Which on the next step we can do something with, right? Mm -hmm. Three, four. 
Oh, it's trying to be a Y, sorry. Square root of X Y. Minus ten. I mean, um, sorry, I thought it was two. Or Y X, but it doesn't matter. But alpha or And then finally. Minus Y squared. Square root of Y squared, right? Uh, stop there for a second. So you don't have to do too much when you first do this. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's a Y, and that's a Oh, that doesn't work. That's all right. Yeah, so it's trying to be a Y. If I just learned how to write, I could be a better teacher. <laughs> Too bad for you. So what is the square root of X squared? X. X. And I'm not going to worry about absolute value. Let me see if you guys are cool with this. Because X already had to be positive for this to even make sense in the first place. Do you see that? The only way square root of X makes sense is if X is at least zero. So it's not negative. It can't be negative. So I don't need an absolute value there. More generally, the square root of 43.9 times the square root of 43.9 is what? 43.9. Done. The square root of something times the square root of the same thing is that thing. Because this is half of it, half of it makes a whole it. So what's square root of x times square root of x? x. You can go straight there. Right? If, you, if you realize that, you have less work to do. What happens in the middle? You're going to keep x, y terms. Are they like terms? Yeah. Yes. Three of them minus two of them is x. one of them. X, y. And at the end, I'm going to get the same way at the beginning. I'm going to get minus y. Minus one. You guys. All right. See? So that's just foiling. It's got radicals in it, which are semi new to us in this class, but the FOIL method doesn't care about that crap. It just does its thing. So, I'll finally shut the hell up and stop expecting reactions. I want you guys to work, you can work on this together. We'll do this together at the end, and then, depending on the time, I'll do a little bit out of the next section. through 12, uh, 3. Yeah. So part of this little handout is acting like a practice quiz, which I normally don't do, but what the hell. So you guys can work together. You can call me over if you need help. Yeah. Does it six attention to the wire to the...